Keepo is probably one of the most important, if not the most important data tool when researching products to sell on Amazon. And you know what? Most of you aren't experts. So I'm hoping to change that by the end of this video. My name's Alex with AC Flip, six figure Amazon seller. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a full Keepa tutorial on a single standalone listing and then also a variation listing. So you guys are better equipped to understand all the different types of products and you can make smarter buying decisions for your Amazon business. Let's jump in. All right, so I have two products for you. I have the standalone listing, just a football, no variations on it. And then of course I have a variation listing uh, that's the shorts. You can see there's a ton of different colors and size variations, but we're gonna go over everything there is to know about Keepa, understanding the charts, understanding all the extra data that Keepa provides and using that information to help us make a smart buying decision whether or not we should be purchasing this for our Amazon business. So with each product, we're getting a hypothetical buy cost and we're gonna be making $4.42, 44% ROI with the current status of this product. So I wanna use that information to help us analyze the product on Keepa. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the price history. So obviously they give you the price history here. So what we can do is look at all of the other sellers that have gotten the buy box over the last three months. Uh, we can zoom out as far as, you know, the entire listing. We can look at the last year. We can look at the last three months, you know, all the way down to the last day. Um, I have close-up view selected here. So um, on both of these, it's basically not going to have zero all the way up to the top range. So um, unfortunately for us, someone showed a sale of $300 on this. So the scale is going to be a little bit messed up. Um, but if we wanted to, we could probably zoom in um, and eliminate this. And then it's going to be more realistic, or at least it's going to be easier to see, you know, the price fluctuations in the price of this product. Um, we're not going to zoom in that far. We're going to keep it at three months, but we can look back and see, right? This product way back in January was selling for $38. It's currently selling for uh, between 26 and 23. Um, what I'm going to do is because we have a buy box for so long, um, and then actually hiding that FBM is going to remove that. Uh, that data point. So actually it gives us a much clearer view of what happened to the price chart on this product. So um, we're seeing that uh, this, like I said, back in January, this product was selling for $38, currently selling for around $26. Um, and then on the second chart here, we see that offer count. That's that purple line. New offer count is sitting around, uh, was nine back in uh, you know early January, currently sitting around 11 or 12. Um, so hasn't, we haven't seen a lot of movement in the offer count. Um, and that's a good sign, right? That's what we want to see on certain listings where the offer count isn't going from, you know, 10 to 50 sellers in a matter of a month or a couple of weeks. Then if you see that information, you're probably going to know that there was a sale ran on that product. And then, you know, a bunch of sellers found that sale and bought the product to sell on Amazon. If we zoom out to the year, do we see any other trends here? So we can see it was out of stock for a very long time. Um, basically all of last year, most of last year, it was out of stock. Um, and then it went back in stock in November. Um, and then consistently it's been in stock for people to purchase at this, whatever price is profitable. But um, we see that there's, you know, at least uh, 10 sellers on this listing for the last three or four months. So something to keep in mind. Now the sales rank is equally as important as the offer count or as the buy box price. And that's that green line mixed in between the buy box price here. Um, so what we're gonna see is the sales rank represents how fast this product is selling. Um, we can see that the sales rank doesn't move a whole lot. And over the last three months, we can see that, um, you know, the sales rank maximum we see here is 108. Um, that was probably because the price was so high, shot up for a tiny bit. And then once the price went back down um, to a reasonable price of what people were willing to spend on a football, that sales rank goes right back down. So um, basically average we can see is sitting around like 50K um, in January. And then as the price lowers, right, people are more willing to purchase this product. So the rank does decline, which means it's selling a little bit faster. Um, we see it's kind of averaging right around that 25K rank. Um, so that information's super important combined with the offer count, combined with the buy box price. So one last data point here to look at is the review count. Um, so if it's a variation listing, review count is a little bit skewed. You got to look at more specifics on the data. But since this is the only uh, variation on this listing, we can see that all these reviews are going to this specific product. So we know that we were at 72 reviews, all the way up to 77 over the last three months. Not super important because it's not giving a good indication that the product is selling often. Um, but we do see that there is an increase over three months, which is a great sign that it is selling, right? People are buying this and then leaving a review. Not everybody that buys the product leaves a review, but I like to estimate that for every, say, 10 to 20 products that are purchased, one person leaves a review. And that's not always true. Um, that's just my estimate. Could be a lot higher than that. Could be every 50 items purchased, you get one review. Um, but just to see that this review count is going up, 
does signify that it is selling. So now that we've broke down basically everything in this price history chart area, we're gonna go over to the data tab and that's gonna have a lot of great information for us to give us more context on buying this product and give us more context if this product is you know, worth purchasing in the near future. Um, so this first page here, not super helpful. It gives you mostly the statistics of what the chart was showing you. Like I said, current sales rank 21K. We see like a 60 day average, 90 day average, 29K. So kind of what I was telling you already. So you can make this type of analysis um, from the chart without you know actually getting the specific numbers, like knowing that it's 22K versus guesstimating that it's around 25K isn't gonna change um, your, your mind on the data all that much. So again, this stuff isn't super important because you can hover over it and it will tell you um, these exact numbers anyways. So um, this whole page, not super important. Um, for me, unless you're like grabbing the ASIN, but the offers tab is actually super important. There's a ton of great information here. So I'm going to break all of it down. So it's going to list all, all the current offers um, because we have used selected. It might show some used offers if there are any. So I like to deselect that because I'm not looking to sell used products. I'm selling only brand new products that I'm purchasing from websites. Um, so I want to see all of the new products listed here. Um, doesn't look like it removed any sellers. So that's good. Um, this first column is the price that these sellers are listed at. So that's that buy box price, right? 2639, that's what this seller is listed at. These are all new condition. Price history is what the seller has uh, dropped their price to. So we can see that, you know, they've been in stock for a while, which means they, uh, you know, sold at $37 as more offers jumped on the listing. They had to lower their price to maintain the buy box. Um, so that's a good sign for us. As we scroll to the right here, we can see there's a stock count sold in a sold 30 days. Now, again, all this information is going to be context for us. We are not taking this, you know, as the end all be all information that is going to make or break our decision on buying a certain product. The stock counts are not always going to be accurate. If you're selling this merchant fulfilled, you don't have to reveal the stock counts, you know, of how much stock that you have. You can manipulate it slightly with uh, FBA sellers, but um, also when FC transfer hits, there's different stock counts that will show and then that will drop off. Um, so we'll get into some of that. The sold is also one that is nice to see, but it doesn't automatically mean, you know, that those sales happened, right? Because there's a couple of things in this chart here that will tell us that this is not an actual true number here. 493, so they sold 93 in the last 30 days. So if we look in the last 30 days, right, that's like from March 1st to the end of March here, we see the stock count went from 129 and it started going down in a consistent manner, right? This looks like sales that are happening. Um, you know, people buy one at a time, maybe sometimes they buy two at a time, sold a couple in a day. So we see the stock count going down. So 93 might be actually pretty accurate. Um, nine sales, we can see this person had 10 in stock and then all of a sudden they're down to one. Took a couple of weeks, seems like consistent sales here. One thing we want to, um, you know, understand, and, and this maybe is more prevalent in some higher rank products that sell a little bit slower. We see that this seller went from three stock all the way to one and then right back up to two and three. So when you see these sharp spikes, and this isn't a super sharp spike, right? Three to one isn't crazy, but you'll see some from like 50 in stock down to one. And that often means that FC transfer happened and keep accounts that as sales happening. So make sure uh, you take this information with a grain of salt because not every time that movement in the stock history happens, does that does not equate to you know selling a product. So right here, it says this seller sold one, so it went from three to one. So right here, it says this seller sold three items, went from three to one, back up to one, and then back down to two. So this might actually be a sale, um, but I don't think this three to one is a sale. I think the product you know, was received by a certain warehouse, needed to get sent to FC transfer. So it went back down to one. One was saved at the warehouse. The other two were distributed to other warehouses. Um, and then once those were received in, and then once those footballs were received in, it went back up to three, sat for a little bit. They got the buy box, sold one unit. That's my theory on that. And again, this listing doesn't show a great example of this, but you will see other listings where it goes from, you know, 50 units down to 20, back up to 50, all within like a day. Um, and then that counts as 30 sales because it went from 50 to 20. It's all based on the stock history movement. So you just have to understand what is the stock history doing? What is the movement? Does the movement look like consistent sales? Like here, how see how steady a decline this is? It's not a sharp drop off like they sold 50 in one day. They're selling a couple per day. Um, and it looks like actual sales. So this number might be more accurate than say, you know, this seller's numbers. So something to keep in mind, but just remember the sales rank is going to be the most accurate thing. That's a number that Amazon provides 
to sellers to the general public. So um, we see that this you know 20k rank. If you do a sales estimator with either Jungle Scout or Seller Amp, you'll know that like a 29k rank in the sports and outdoors category is going to sell around 500 times per month. So the fact that this seller sold 93 in the last 30 days seems to be fairly accurate. Another reason why I like to take all this information with a grain of salt is because. The totals on these sometimes can be super inaccurate. We see that this seller claims to have over a thousand in stock. Again, merchant fulfilled sellers can manipulate their stock counts and they can also manipulate, you know, what this information is going to show. So it shows that they have a thousand in stock. Do they actually have a thousand in stock? Not really sure. This number doesn't go down at all. Um, so we don't really know if they sold any um, and do they actually have a thousand in stock. We don't really know. If you only use this data to make your decisions, you're going to say, oh, wow, there's a lot of stock on this product. It's not worth buying because um, the supply and demand is, is messed up. It's not in a great place right now. Right? It only sells 500 times, but there's 1,200 in stock. Um, that means that you know, the price is going to keep dropping and sellers are um, you know, having there's too much stock on the listing. So it's not worth me getting into this listing when really that's not super true. This could be you know, at five or 10 or this seller might not have hardly any in stock, which means that the stock counts might be at, you know, say, 200, 100. And then all of a sudden, now, you know, once some of the sellers fall off the listing, that price is going to creep back up and then you'll be in more of a profitable place. So again, I don't love the numbers as much as I love the actual movement on the stock history chart. So I'm seeing that slight decline here, which means the seller is probably actually getting sales at that. Same with this seller. You know, this looks like a steady decline in the stock history. And this one looks like a steady incline. Interesting. But you do see some sales drop there, which is great. That's going to tell us that this product actually does sell kind of confirms that that sales rank is what it is and makes sense that, you know, this product sells 500 times per month. You know, some of the offers tell us that uh, that's true. If we go over a couple columns, we can see that, you know, these are all prime sellers and FBA sellers. So again, just be a little bit more skeptical on the FBM sellers because they can manipulate their stock counts by themselves without Amazon changing anything. Just like you see here, they have a thousand in stock. Do they actually, we don't know, but since they're an FBM seller, they can modify that anytime they want. Another interesting data point is the ratings and review count of the seller. Now this is not the product, right? This is the actual seller on this listing. Um, and that's going to give you just a sense of who's selling this product. If you see a fluctuation of different review counts, right? Like 270, 300, 1900, 32. You know, that's a great sign that this is an online arbitrage product. You don't have to worry about, you know, like being dominated by wholesale sellers. If you only see review counts of say 20,000, 15,000, 200,000, right? Then it's going to be probably more closely related to a wholesale product. And you're going to have a hard time getting the buy box share, or you might even get an IP complaint on some of those listings. So when you see this variety here of smaller review counts to larger review counts, that's a great sign. Last scene isn't super important because if they have a repricer, right, it's going to modify this when that price is changed. But the first scene is interesting. When we see the first scene, depending on how long these people have been on the listing, right? So this seller, the third generation, has sold this product for 14 months. Maybe it's on and off. It's not consistent 14 months, but it does show that they found this product a long time ago and they still have stock enough to sell this product. So um, that's something you want to see. You want to see sellers that are selling this product a long time because maybe they're able to find this profitably should give you some more confidence to find it yourself profitably and sell it consistently for a long time. If you're dealing with low offer counts, you're going to find listings that just only have a couple of offers on them. That's where you can include historical offers. And that's going to add all of these sellers, right? That maybe had stock in the last 30 days, had stock in the last 90 days, um, but they sold out of their stock and they dropped off the listing. So here is going to add a bunch of sellers that maybe will help give you more context to how often this sells. So we can see, right, this seller is not currently in stock, right? They fall off the listing, but they did sell a lot in the last 30, 90 days. So, and it does look like consistent sales as well. It doesn't look like an FC transfer sale or anything like that. So um, they just currently ran out of stock, which means they fall off the listing. So you want to include those types of sellers. That's just going to be more information for you to confirm your idea on whether or not you should be purchasing this. You can always change the graph range. You know, I like the 90 day average because it gives you plenty of information to make decisions. Um, and, and if you go back further, right, it's just going to give you more data. The last piece of information I want to look at that's going to add a bunch of context is the buy box statistics tab. So on the buy box statistics tab, we're going to see how often these sellers are getting the buy box. And of course, this is not going to be super helpful on listings that don't have a buy box. But since this listing has had a buy box every day for the last 90 days, uh, you're going to see a good split in the percentage. And what you don't want to see is one seller getting 95% of the share 
and then a couple other sellers getting like 1% or less than 1%. If you see that and you see a bunch of other sellers getting like two, three, 4%, and it's a fast selling listing, that's not all bad. But what you'd like to see is a more even distribution. 40% for one seller, they just might have more in stock and are getting the buy box more often because some of these other sellers only have 10 in stock, they sell out, they lose the buy box, right? Or they have zero stock, so they don't have an opportunity to get the buy box shares. So just by default, they're just gonna have a lower buy box percentage win. So a lot of these top sellers probably just have a lot more in stock, but it is good that we're seeing it distributed between a bunch of different sellers here. You know, five, six sellers have had the buy box share and they're all different review counts as well. You still see, you know, 198, that looks like online arbitrage, 270 could be online arbitrage. If we wanna go back further, um, that was only the last 30 days and the last 90 days, we do see some really small sellers that are still getting the buy box share, even if it's one less than 1%. So that's a good sign. That's what you wanna see on a listing that you are wondering if you're gonna get the buy box share or not. You can actually also sort by last one, and then that's gonna help you understand, you know, who's getting the buy box share currently, um, and how recently is it rotating? We can see it rotated twice today already, um, you know, four or five times in the last in the last 24 hours. So that's a great sign that other people are getting the buy box share depending on how much stock you have. All right, so now I wanna look at the variation listing because there's one extra tab that matters to us and it's the variations tab. And that's the only information I'm gonna provide on this listing because everything else is gonna be similar to what we just looked at. So on this type of listing, we're gonna go to the variations tab and it's gonna basically tell us some information about every single variation that is selling on this listing. You saw that there are a ton of different colorways and then there's a ton of different sizes for each colorway. So the rule of thumb is, you know, neutral colors are gonna sell faster than bright, vibrant colors. And then the main sizes, especially for men's clothing is gonna be, you know, small, medium, large XL, sometimes two XL. And then for women's, it's basically the same sizes. So you wanna make sure that the first items you're checking are the blacks, the whites, the grays, the navy blues, you know, some of those neutral colors, some of the hot pinks, the yellows, the reds, those are going to sell less often just in nature. But we want to use the variations tab to confirm, you know, what we think about these types of products and the variations. So um, scroll down to the variations tab here. What I like to do is sort by ratings because rating is an easy thing to get on a certain product. A review is when people have to go in, write a review, you know, rate it on a scale of one to five, and then write a certain review on it. A rating is literally just, you know, Amazon sends you an email after you purchase the product. How do you like the product? Give it a review. You click, you know, five star, four star, three star, and it adds it to the listing. So people are giving ratings to this product a lot more often than they are giving reviews. So that's why I like looking in the ratings history, because normally it's a lot higher of a number than the reviews. So if we see that this product is getting ratings, that does kind of mean that it is selling often, right? Maybe uh, every 10 people are giving a rating. And that's, like I said, as simple as getting an email from Amazon, clicking five star, and then it adds it to the listing. So you can see this listing over the last 90 days shows the amount of ratings of every single variation on the listing. You can see it goes all the way down. And some of these don't have any ratings or reviews in the last 90 days, which means it's probably not selling as much. But some of these top selling variations, like I said, the grays, the blacks, and all the common sizes, do have a ratings increase over the last 90 days, which is a great sign. That's what we wanna see. Um, we wanna be looking for those fast selling variations because those are gonna get us the most sales. And hopefully we find ones that have the highest buy box that can give us the most profit. So one thing to keep in mind, just because we're sorting by ratings doesn't mean the most ratings sells the most. We have to double check how often the ratings are getting added to this listing over the last 90 days. So the ratings history chart is definitely more important than the actual ratings. Some variations have been on the listing longer than others. So maybe a variation has been on the listing for a lot longer, but has so it has more ratings overall, but maybe recently it hasn't been selling as quickly, so it hasn't been going up in ratings. So for example, this one has 114 ratings, this one has 141. We see that this only went from 140 up to 142. So it only got basically two ratings, three ratings in the last 90 days. When this one went from 110 all the way up to 114. So um, three more ratings. So it looks like it's on a more steady incline. And as actually as of recently has gone up even more as well compared to this one hasn't gone up as much. So potentially this product sells a little bit more often than this product, even though this variation has more reviews overall and more ratings. So this ratings is important, but the ratings history chart is even more important. So pay attention to that. We see that this one has the most ratings and it looks like it's on the most steady of an incline uh, in the ratings history. So this one still probably sells the most. This one also has a good incline. This is gonna be helpful actually when you scroll down to some of the slower selling variations, we can see only you know 1% of the ratings total goes to this product, but we do see a slight increase here. 
and we see a slight increase on the regulars if it's a common size, still might sell fairly often. So it does have 43 ratings overall, and we do see a steady increase over the last 90 days compared to this product, right? This is a like a Heather Charcoal Small. We see that's basically flatline over the last 90 days compared to a Red Large that does have an increase over the last 90 days. So maybe we'd be more willing to buy the Red large than the gray small. So one last thing I want to mention is looking at the context of all of these things, all of this information that Keepa gives you can easily lead to analysis paralysis. What I want you to do is understand some of the main things that Keepa gives you, like the variations tab, understand some of the offers details, understand the buy box statistics. And then of course, look at the sales history chart. What happens um, when the offer count goes up? The price clearly goes down on something like this. When the offer count goes down, the price kind of goes up and now that the offer count's been level, the price is pretty level. Understand the movement in these charts. All that information is gonna be great context that adds up to your final buying decision. I suggest you don't pick one specific set of data to be the deciding factor on whether or not you purchase this product for your Amazon business. Use all of the different context clues to help build confidence that you can buy this and sell it at the price that you think you can. Reviewing this information over and over is gonna only help you become an expert at Keepa and it's gonna help you buy better inventory. All right, if you didn't learn anything from this video, go back and rewatch it, but you should have gotten a great understanding of how to read Keepa charts, how to understand all of the Keepa data so you can find products easier and make smarter buying decisions for your Amazon business. If you guys found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.